Hi everyone, Pete Calamain here. I hope you're having an awesome day. Now in our previous videos, we have seen how to make different component footprints in different ways. Uh, today I want to show you a bit more on the supply chain intelligence that you have when you're using uh, the manufacturer part search. So for instance, let us assume again that we would like to make a component footprint that we don't have yet. For instance, this capacitor, it's a 33 nanofarad capacitor. Let's go ahead and save it to our workspace. So we select it to be a capacitor. Then over here again, we can choose what we would like to add in that solution. Let's say we don't need the data sheets. We will use the symbols, the footprints as it is. So we can go ahead and add that. Now, and this is, this is our first solution, let's say. You can save this and then add it. And the interesting thing here is that you have the supply chain intelligence immediately linked, immediately linked to that. So let's refresh this bill of materials, the bomb dock. What you see for this component is that there is already a solution added for that. We see a manufacturer part number, of course, but we also see a supplier, supplier part numbers, and even a unit price. So this already makes our life very easy if you want to order these components. Now, also next to that, we have an ID on the volumes that are still available. So if there's any logistic issues or challenges that you might have, it will immediately show up over here. So for this capacitor, of course, there's no issue. There's a lot of stock remaining at the suppliers that we yeah, can select over here. Now we can also go one step further. Um, there's a favorite suppliers list. So the interesting thing is, let's say that you're only using a couple of suppliers. For instance, you say you're only using DigiKey, Farnell or Mouser. Then immediately the bomb dock will be updated. And what you'll have over here is only solutions that are available at your suppliers that you've chosen over here. You can also set the currency, the production of boards, or the number of boards that you are going to produce, and you have an exact, exact pricing per board. So this is interesting stuff. This is all linked to your component. Next to that, it's also very interesting that you can spot the manufacture lifecycle over here. So we see that most of these components are in volume production. If a component is not recommended for a new design or at an end of life, this will show up over here as well. So immediately, already in the phase when you are making your schematic or your system architecture, you will see that the chosen component that it might pose a problem in the future. So this is interesting stuff that is immediately visible here in your bomb dock. Now maybe let's return back to our component. We can also edit it. An interesting thing is that you can add extra solutions. So let's say maybe that one of the components that you're choosing, you want to have a couple of alternatives because the stock is relatively low for what you're using. Then you can go and do that as follows. So this is our part choice. It's still the 33 nanofarads. Uh, capacitor that we have 50 volts so what you can do is click add and then you can add a solution for that one so let's go ahead and check that so i'll check for 0402 ceramic capacitor 33 nanofarads and um, Altium will immediately give you a couple of options. This is one that stands out. So this is a solution that we could add. You just select it, you click OK. And then there's again a couple of footprints that you could add. Now let's say that we are not interested in this, in these footprints, but we just want to have it as an extra solution. Um, then you can just deselect all these and you'll see that it shows up as a second solution over here. So this is interesting if one of these two components would be out of stock. Now we have updated that. And if you then go to your bill of materials document and we refresh it, you'll see we're out of date. That is because of the changes that we made. So we would need to refresh that in our schematic doc as well. But what you see is that we already have the second solution over here as well. And then Altium will allow us to select one of these two solutions that we want to go for. Typically, the low cost solution or the lowest cost solution will be chosen. We could say, for instance, this solution, the primary, that we don't want to use it. Maybe there is some reason why we don't want to use it. You select not used. And you see that then immediately you switch to the secondary solution, uh, which is now called the primary. So this is a very interesting way to work because everything is tied to your component and you really have that supply chain intelligence here. 
And then based on that, you can make a bill of materials report, of course. This is a way to export uh, from your BOM doc. You can select the columns, but what is very interesting for the people in your sourcing department, let's say, you know exactly what supplier to go for, what the supplier part number is, and even the pricing is already indicated. So this is really the strength of the supply chain data that is incorporated in here. Now, the last thing I would like to show you is revision states. So what you have seen over here is that there is a revision state and we see new from design, draft or production is mentioned over here. Now, let's look it up here in our Explorer window. I'll make this a bit bigger. If we select capacitors, then we can go to the solution that we have just created. Now, what you see is the revision state is draft. We have some options here. So there's operations where we can change a state. So what does this mean? This is an option here to promote it if you hover over it to prototype. So let's say this is a component that we have now made. With the schematic that we have, we will make a first prototype. What we could do is for this component is to promote it to prototype. So I'll do that. We process it. Um, I can say it's first proto run that we are doing. And what you'll now see is that the revision, revision state has changed to prototype. If you now look at our bomb doc again, if we then refresh the bomb doc, what you'll see in there is that it now changed to prototype. So this is a very interesting way to keep track of where a component has already been used in a real life prototype or even a production run. So this is a very short overview on the supply chain intelligence. Of course, there's much more to find out about it. This is just a highlight of the basic functionality, but to give you an idea of how powerful this can be. I hope this video was valuable for you. Bye-bye.